first at 10, the city of Alexandria is expanding requirements for face coverings. Now people will have to wear a mask while outdoors, but only in certain situations. ABC 7's Tobias Rodriguez spoke to the mayor about how it works and how it will be enforced. That's new at 10. These are the sights and sounds of King Street in Alexandria on a Saturday evening. Crowds of people eating and shopping, some socially distanced, others not so much. Looking around right now, yes, there are people wearing masks, but there also are not, like there's people not wearing masks. On Saturday, City Council voted to expand Governor Northam's mask order, deciding if you're outside on public space and you can't socially distance, you have to wear a mask. I absolutely believe you should wear a mask if you can't social distance because this COVID-19 is, it is for real. There's over 192,000 people that are dead from it. Mayor Justin Wilson says this ordinance will help slow the spread of the virus. In discussion leading up to the vote, there was talk of a $100 fine for those in violation of the ordinance. Now, that will not be the case. There will be no fine. We don't want to be in an enforcement mode here. We, we, we are hoping for folks to comply. Mayor Wilson says if you have to be in busy areas of Alexandria like King Street, wear a mask but you're still safer at home. The safest thing is to, to be socially distanced from folks and not be in situations uh, where you're in close contact with folks who might be able to uh, transmit the virus to you. Wilson hopes this decision will move other officials in the Commonwealth to adopt similar measures. There should be consistency in these rules. And so ideally, um, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful the governor or, or, or the General Assembly will take this up. Now that the ordinance has passed, it will go into effect October 1st. Reporting in Alexandria, Tobias Rodriguez, ABC 7 News. Now, for the rest of Virginia, there is currently no outdoor mask requirement. It is, however, strongly recommended by state officials. In Maryland, Governor Hogan ordered masks be worn outdoors when social distancing is not possible. And Mayor Bowser has also ordered people in D.C. to wear a mask while outdoors. This metro bus looking more like a metro boat. You see it plunging headlong through dangerously high water in Mount Rainier. Look a little closer and you can see that it left cars that were parked on Arundel Road bobbing and swaying in its wake. Seven on your side reached out to Metro to see if this is what drivers are trained to do. And also, what about any potential damage that this may have caused? In their response, Metro wrote, quote, We are aware of the video and it has been flagged for the chief safety officer to investigate. Just about three miles away in northeast Washington, D.C.'s bravest had to break out a banana boat to check on cars that went underwater. A crew paddling from car to car, searching for anyone who may have been trapped. And they ended up rescuing at least one person who had to be checked out by EMS. And that driving rain caused Rock Creek to swell. The stream gauge showing that water levels rose above 10 feet. When that happens, water goes over the parking lots and, of course, the roadways. And as you can see here, drivers continued through the flooded roads, some going around a fire engine in place to warn drivers of the danger. Now, Metro hasn't said if there are any passengers on that bus. Meanwhile, D.C. Fire and EMS rescued at least five people today, and they stress again to steer clear of high water. Now, you can also sign up for Alert DC and the Stormwatch 7 weather app to get weather updates before you even get into your car. All right, Michelle, and look at this in the Delray neighborhood of Alexandria. Residents on Luray Avenue tell us, seven on your side, that the flooding like this just keeps happening. In fact, our Jay Corf is in Alexandria tonight. And Jay, after reaching out to city leaders, you're hearing of possible change already? Yeah, Jonathan, track down one city leader who said wholesale changes are necessary in the wake of what happened all throughout the city today. In particular, he and many others, especially the residents who live here, have concerns about this one alleyway. Uh, folks here say that this storm drain just didn't work today, hasn't worked in the past, and they're sick of it. It's hard to imagine that this trickle in an Alexandria alley was a torrent Thursday afternoon, scattering trash cans, debris, and flooding nearby homes, unless you had the proof. I have to video this. I have, I have to get somebody to see this. Tom Finley captured the flash flood he feared would swallow whole his neighbor. And I walk out into the alley, and I see my neighbor searching with her feet for the drain. That person was Olesia Sadorkina. At its worst, the, the drain water was at about here. Her efforts to find and clear that storm drain were unsuccessful by the time she waded in. 
her home and others were flooded. Yeah. As you opened the door, the water was probably up to our hip, and as you opened it, the water just came flooding yeah, just into the flooding. house. Going through this, I think now for the third time in a year, uh, it's really exasperating. And once again, Tom Finley has the proof. He captured these images back in July following a hard rain. These are from the previous year. Residents suspect infrequent maintenance on this one storm drain and aging infrastructure are likely to blame. But one city official says Thursday's mess was caused by too much rain falling too quickly. Sidorkin and other residents have complained to the city. We're getting very nice emails. Oh, we're so sorry you're going through this. And, you know, uh, you know, we, we hope hang in there. But you know what? I, I don't want to hang in there. I want something to be done about this. So we reached out to council member John Taylor Chapman. But this was an epic event. Throughout the city, we saw alleys like this turn to literal uh, rivers. Chapman tells Seven on your side Thursday's flooding means city leaders need to quickly consider wholesale changes in terms of storm management. An alleyway should be helping to mitigate some of the flooding, um, not adding to it. And those changes will be discussed and considered in a meeting that is happening this weekend. In Alexandria, Jay Corf, ABC 7 News. Jay, thanks for that. And even further West Alexandria in the Rosemont neighborhood, water came up to people's knees. We know that because they went out and took video of a seven on your side viewer, Caroline. She sent us this video, including a person that was trying to drive through. Never a good idea. Aww. Your pictures, your videos, they help tell the tale about what's happening in your area. You can you can join in if you'd like. Just tap chime in right on the Stormwatch 7 app or right at the top of our website, which is WJLA.com, if you want to upload the pictures and video, and oftentimes we will put it on television. Thank you for doing that, too. Well, the NFL season kicked off last night with the Super Bowl champs, the Chiefs, hosting the Houston Texans. And the two teams came together for a display of unity in the fight to end racial justice. Injustice, rather. Lift Every Voice and Sing, also known as the Black National Anthem, was played along with the Star Spangled Banner, uh, something being done at every game this week. You hear the boos right there, though. Tonight, as grounds crews are preparing FedEx Field, we're learning more about what to expect here on Sunday. New at 11, ABC 7's Annalisa Gale reports that the Howard University Choir was asked to perform for the Washington football team for the first time. It's a song performed in 1900 in Jacksonville, Florida. It's been growing in popularity ever since. I learned it as a child in church. It's called Lift Every Voice and Sing, but it's better known as the Black National Anthem. What a poignant song for this time that we're in. For the first time, the Howard University Choir will perform that song virtually at the home opener for the Washington football team. Lift Every Voice and Sing is a call to action. Eric Poole is the director of Howard University's choirs and bands. Reminding us of what we've been through, and what we must keep working for. Longtime fan Maurice Hawkins says it's another step in the right direction for the team that changed its name this summer and hired its first black team president. Because we're in this social justice climate right now and you know, really bringing awareness to the issues. So does my heart justice one as a graduate of a historical black college university. The Washington football team released photos of the helmets that will be worn by players on Sunday, which will feature words like Black Lives Matter, Stop hate and even the name of an 11 year old boy shot and killed in DC. All words which many are hoping will start a conversation. Let's be at the table and talk with each other and, and figure out how we change things, how we make things better for the next generation. And the team announced last month that there will be no fans to kick off the season due to safety precautions. Many fans will watch at home. The game starts at 1 p.m. At FedEx Field, Annalisa Gale, ABC 7 News.